What's up everybody? Peter McKinnon here and today we're talking about this horrible lighting situation and how to make it look like this for less than 50 bucks. Welcome back to another tutorial. So glad to have you guys here. And I know what you're thinking. What? I can get these lighting results for less than $50? Yes. Yes, you can. And it's honestly, like I'll be honest, I will be 100% honest, so easy to do. Lighting is something that scares a lot of people. And they either think to themselves like, I just don't care to light something and just no interest and that's fine. Uh, there's also people who are like, I don't have the money or the budget or kind of like the interest in learning about which lights to buy and then spending the money on those lights. I totally get that too. Then there's the people who are like, I would love to light something well, but I know Pete that you always say, natural light is the best, find that natural light. But so I live in a basement apartment or my apartment faces a brick wall in New York and I get no sunlight in there. Or I'm shooting in a building today that has no windows. So sometimes you gotta rig up a lighting system. And this is kind of what I've rigged up today, which is a typical kind of home office setup. It's a little bit edgy. I got that fall off on the, uh, on my left side of my face here to add that dramatic kind of cinematic feel. If I wanted to fill that in a little bit, I could add a little bit of extra light there, but I kind of like that edgy, mysterious, cinematic look a little bit more. I think it pops. So even though this is a really budget DIY lighting setup, if I'm being paid thousands and thousands of dollars to do a commercial gig, I'm probably not gonna use this setup, full disclosure. I'm going to use professional lights and modifiers and stuff that I've already purchased for a gig of that caliber. But if I'm someone that's starting in photography or if I'm new to photography or if I'm just trying to figure out lighting and I wanna dabble and start to play around with it a little bit, this is the perfect kind of thing to mess around with and go out and buy the items and try it out for yourself so you can see what the difference light makes because it's not always about the camera that you're using. The light is the biggest aspect of photography. Be it that you're shooting outside or inside or you're using natural light or strobes or speed lights on top of your camera or you've got a setup like this or you've got a $10,000 professional studio lighting setup. Light is so important, it's crucial and it's gonna make or break your photos. You're gonna need some clamps you can buy these at a hardware store for like 99 cents or at a photography shop, they're gonna cost you, I don't know why I said photography shop. No, I've never said that, it's a camera shop. At a camera shop, they're gonna cost you like five bucks max per clip, but they're really, really strong. I use them all the time. I suggest getting some anyway. You're gonna need like three pieces of foam cord. Just go to Walmart and get them. They're usually like a dollar max per piece, so it should cost you less than $3 if they're on sale or whatever. You're gonna need an LED light. Now, instead of going to buy a huge LED panel or some some Westcott Flex LED light, which is awesome by the way. But instead of buying like that professional photo gear that I was telling you about that the camera shop would sell for thousands or hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, go to Home Depot and you're gonna buy this Husky LED light panel. It's a work light. So if you're working in the garage, if you're working outside, you plug it in, it lights up the workspace, you're good to go. But we're gonna use that LED light to light this scene and that's the only light right now that I'm using. I don't have this on the shopping list, but if you wanna to go to Ikea and buy a desk lamp, you can do that and an extra piece of foam core so that you can bounce that light off that foam core to fill in that negative space. But like I said, I prefer more of the edgy look. So I don't really think you need to buy a desk lamp, so I'm gonna leave that off the list. You're also gonna need gels. Now you can get these at a camera shop. You can order them on Amazon. I'm gonna drop some links below so you guys can navigate to this stuff easily. These are colored pieces of a really thin plastic, if you will. It's like a, I don't know, is, like, is it a plastic? Is it, it's not paper, but I don't know. It looks like this. Kind of looks like, see how it changes the color. What would you say that, it, whatever. Gels, just look it up, I'll drop the links below. Another thing, one of my favorite things in the whole world, gaff tape. I love gaff tape, you don't have to use it, masking tape would be good too. Duct tape's way too sticky and it'll just rip off your, rip off your face when you try to pull it off anything, it's way too strong. So get some gaff tape, get some masking tape, we're gonna use that to tape the gels over the lights. The last thing you're gonna need is a light stand. It, it can be a cheap one, it doesn't matter how expensive it is, it just needs something that can extend into the air. You can use an ironing board for this depending on what you lean it against. I'll drop some links to some really cheap light stands below. I definitely recommend investing in one of them or a couple of them because they always come in handy. 
but we're using this light stand and those duct clamps to clamp those pieces of foam core to for our kind of, uh, our little scrim modifier, little DIY project here, okay? So we got light stands, we got LED panel, we got gaff tape, we got clamps, we got gels. I think that's pretty much it. So the first thing we gotta do is turn off the lights in here completely so it's dark, and then we're gonna turn on our LED light panel. Okay, so we've got some backlight from our monitor, but we can't depend on that. So we need to turn on the LED. That's not gonna work whatsoever. Uh, way too bright, looks absolutely disgusting. So we need to bounce this off the pieces of foam core that we bought, and we gotta adjust our camera settings a little bit. We're gonna bring down that aperture, bring down that ISO, and bring down that shutter, because woo, this is not working. Okay, we've adjusted our camera settings a little bit. They're good, that's where I like them. Now we gotta fix this lighting setup, because that's why. Now that we've moved that, and face the light the other way. It's not as bright and hideous, but we need that light to bounce off that foam core and light up our face. So let's bring over that foam core. Look at that. We're almost there. LED panel, bouncing off the foam core, reflecting in my face. We need a little bit of a background light. There we go, adds a little more life to the scene. If you don't have a background light, you can use candles, you can use a lamp and put it on the floor so that it reflects the light upwards. Lots of different things you can do. But if you have pot lights or you have candles or different things that you can light, do that and put it in the background. It'll just be soft, but it makes that detail a lot nicer. Okay, hang our gel up here. Right in front of the light like that. Yep. Perfect, good to go. And we are pretty much done. That's it. It's that fast. It doesn't take a long time to set up. We have an extra fill light on the right side here, which is my left. Now if I just tap this lamp, you'll see it fills in a little bit on my left side. But like I said earlier, I don't really like that, but it is optional. I'm gonna show you how it's done right now. So for this, we just have an Ikea lamp here, which is accessed by this push button. And I've got that bouncing off another piece of foam core, which reflects me to the side. I've also got another CTO gel, just taped the top of the lamp here to get rid of that orange color cast. Don't really like that. So again, to try and match the light, tape that little gel up there and we are good to go. And on the back side of this, I am literally just leaning a monopod against the desk to help keep that foam core from falling over. That's it. Sometimes it's just going through gear that you already own or going through your house and just finding things that you don't use or things that you do use and finding new ways to use them. So for that, works perfect. Now, I use a Gorillapod to fasten this Husky light to a light stand. You don't have to do that. There's a hole in the bottom of the Husky stand that you can put a tripod plate on and mount it to a tripod so that you can adjust the tilt, the pan, all that stuff, which is great. But if you don't have that and you don't have a Gorillapod, it comes with its own base plate that sits flat. So you can put it on a stack of books, you can put it on a stack of boxes. You don't have to use this exact setup to mount it, to bounce it off these pieces of foam core. That's just the way I have it because I I have this equipment. Eventually, yeah, a Gorilla Pod is a great idea because you can just wrap it around the light stand and you can pretty much wrap it around anything. So I could wrap it around something on the ceiling, bounce light. It's really versatile for me. So that's why I use the Gorilla Pod, but you don't have to do that. You can use the included legs that come with it, mount it flat, just be creative with it. An ironing board always seems to work well because you can just kind of extend it flat into like a little makeshift table and balance things on that. You'll notice that your room or your office or wherever you're lighting this stuff up ends up looking just ridiculous and you'd never know from looking at me on that side of the camera, but if I turned it around, you're like, whoa, that's, that's weird. What do you got going on in here? So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I had a blast making this tutorial for you. Hopefully you get something out of it. If you still have questions or comments, you can definitely drop them below. I do my best to get back to as many people as I can, so chances are I will see it and I'll try to get back to you. Like this video, share it, and just, you know, have a good day. Have a great day, actually.
Thank you.